So um, we are recording, but um, I just wanted to welcome everybody today to our shared services workshop with Elizabeth Allen of First Volunteer Insurance. Um, Ms. Elizabeth is going to be talking to us today about uh, liability insurance. Um, so we'll get started here in just a second. Um, Again, I'm Amy Loudermilk. I'm the program manager for Arts Build, and our mission is to build community through the arts. So um, that's why we're bringing you these shared services workshops. Um, we uh, will be changing things up here in the next month or so with how we do the um, shared services workshop. So uh, stay tuned to your email uh, for some updates on that. Um, but uh, with no further ado, I will hand this over to Miss Elizabeth. Again, we are recording, um, and this uh, will be posted to our YouTube page um, after the presentation a little later today. So, Miss Elizabeth. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. And I want to start off by telling you how much I appreciate your time um, this morning. I know everybody's very busy. Um, the topic is, as you can see from the first slide, is unraveling the mysteries of risk. Um, and I say that because um, I view insurance uh, not so much as a product to sell, but as a risk management tool to help organizations protect their assets and their reputation. Um, and let's see, I am going to introduce, let you know who I am. Um, I am, uh, I work for First Volunteer Insurance. We are a division of First Volunteer Corporation, which also owns the bank that a lot of people may be familiar with. I have over 30 years experience in commercial insurance. I've worked at various insurance agencies throughout the years. I also have a CIC designation and that, that is an, an acronym for Certified Insurance Counselor. And it is a designation that is awarded after several years of study and exams and um, um, it's, it's very important to me to maintain that. Also, I am a local artist. I am a painter. I have a studio at my home. I have been painting for years and teaching. I uh, have served on the board of nonprofits or organizations off and on throughout the years. Arts education and enriching our community through arts and culture is very, very important to me. And I would like to do everything I can to assist those of you in our community who promote this as their mission and um, doing that by helping you protect your assets. And that's what this is about. The first question that a lot of people ask is, do I need insurance? Do I, do I really need insurance for what I'm doing? And there's some bullet points on this slide that if you have any one of these, then you need insurance. Um, do you have, does your organization have a board of directors? Do you have employees? Do you have direct employees, part-time employees? Do you have volunteers? Sometimes you may have both. You may have employees and volunteers. Do you work with the public? Do you go out into the community and work with the public? Do you hold special events like fundraisers, um, festivals, um, art camps, art schools, any special events? Do you own any property? Do you own artwork? Do you own a building? Do you rent studio space or office space? Do you have furniture? Um, and lastly on this list is, do you have any property 
in your care, custody, and control, meaning is it in your building, in your possession, in your car, that does not belong to you, it belongs to somebody else. All of these items, all of these bullet points, if you have any one of these, then you need to think about your insurance program surrounding them. If anybody has any questions, please raise your hand or let Amy know, and I'll be happy to stop and answer them. And, and I just realized that I forgot to announce that. So yes, um, for security purposes, uh, I have turned off your ability to unmute and share your screen. So if you do have questions, uh, please use the, the reactions button at the bottom of your screen or feel free to put the question in the chat. So sorry about that, Elizabeth. No problem, no, that's all right. I, I couldn't remember if you said it or not. I thought, well, throw that in there. These are, these are the topics that we're going to review. And I'm not, I know I'm, I'm not gonna go into the nitty gritty technical aspect of, of insurance because I, I know nobody wants to hear that nor does anybody wanna read an insurance policy on the, sl on the slide. So um, the bullet points here that we're gonna go over are what is, in, what is insurance? Um, you know, a lot of times I think most of us think of insurance as a commodity. It's something we have to have. Um, it, you, you know, you think of the, the Liberty Mutual EMU or the, um, the Geico Gecko. And, you know, the, a lot of times that's, that's what we think of when we think of when we hear the word insurance. The next is how to determine whether or not you need insurance. And we, we went over that a, a second ago, but this can help. What we're gonna talk about later is to determine if there's specific instances where you may or may not need insurance. How much will it cost for, particularly for nonprofits? Um, cost is very uh, important. You don't, you don't wanna be paying for insurance that you don't need add-on services provided. I mentioned when I introduced myself about risk management and um, the add-on services that are provided with an insurance review or an insurance consultation can consist of assistance with risk control, helping you run background checks on employees or volunteers, helping you with any human resource. Um, issues and most add-on services are provided at no extra cost to you. And uh, lastly, um, I do mention the risk management assistance and, and that's, I've already covered that. Any, any questions on that? Okay. All right, um, the, we're gonna talk briefly about the different types of insurance. The first um, type of insurance that's most common to all insurance policies is property insurance. Property insurance is coverage for tangible property. That's things you can touch, furniture, buildings, artwork, stock, supplies, and again, property of others. Even if it doesn't belong to you, if it's in your possession, it, it's it's probably you know you still have an obligation to insure that. Um, what's not covered under the basic property policy or the intangible property would be your software. There's also insurance available for for that. Um, I have a claim scenario below just to give you an idea of what sorts of things could happen. And the, um, let's say you're hosting an art show in your facility, or even if it's a, a outdoor, if it's at a festival, but you're the host, your organization is the host. And you display the work that belongs to other artists. Uh, let's say you're doing it on consignment or commission. And some of the pieces are sold. And because it's a, a show running for a, a length of time, even though the pieces are sold, you wanna keep them hanging in your show with that red dot on there. So um, they're gonna 
uh, remain hanging in the show. A fire breaks out in your space and smoke damage destroys most of the paintings. Are you covered? Do you have coverage for the paintings that belong to the other artist? Are you covered for the paintings that have been purchased by individuals? Are you covered for your own uh, items or art that you have? Okay. Again, here's here's what happens if you the the standard property policy does not automatically provide coverage for property of others. The, in order to the, this coverage is easily obtainable, but unless you ask for it or you have your insurance agent or whoever you're working with on your insurance. Um, has an understanding of what you're doing, what what your operations are. Um, you may not you may not have this extension of coverage on your property insurance policy. And one of the most important things to know about this is the addition of this coverage is not expensive. Um, so to 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 not ask the question am I covered or to not it, want to get a quote on this line of coverage, it, it's, um, you know, you have nothing to lose by doing that because it really isn't very expensive. The second most important thing when it comes to the type of um, business that most of us are in is how do you correctly value the artwork? Standard property insurance policies, if there's a loss, they're only going to cover the value of the materials. Again, we're talking about tangible property. So that would be like the frame or the panel, the cost of the panel, or even just the oil paint itself. What's not covered unless you have a correctly endorsed property policy is the intangible value, the retail cost, um, the, because if the scenario I gave, if you lose all that artwork, you also lose the retail value. So that's a that's a, a financial loss to you or your organization. Um, and if you have not, if you don't have this coverage, again, using the claim scenario I mentioned, your reputation in the community or among those that you serve could suffer. And insurance, having this type of insurance would not only um, provide you with financial um, assistance, but it, would, it can also protect your reputation if people know that you are protecting their belongings. Any, any questions about property insurance right now before we move on? Okay. We've got one question from Dale in the chat. Okay, great. Um, Dale asks, can I require my festival booth or studio space owners to provide their own in information and direct them to you if I have a clause in my contract to this effect? I'm okay, not liable? Y yes, you can do that. Yes. Um, what you, what, and, and again, this is something that a risk management uh, risk manager can help you work through. You you have a couple of options. Either you can make sure they understand that they're on their own, and and have them show you that they've got coverage for their own property, or you can provide a waiver that they sign and you sign stating that they acknowledge that you are not going to be held responsible for anything that happens to the, their artwork while it's in your care, custody, and control. And um, I actually have templates, sample templates to assist you so that you don't have to make one up, you know, just from scratch. So yeah, great, really good question is, and we, we call that transfer of risk. Absolutely, Dale, that's, that's exactly what you're doing is you're transferring that risk back onto them. Yeah. 
The next uh, important line of business that we're going to talk about is general liability insurance. And one of the most important things to remember about this, and a lot of people get confused about it, is this is third party coverage. It's going to pay another person. It's not going to reimburse you. Uh, it provides coverage for, for judgment and for defense. So it will, it will pay for your legal defense and, and defense expenses. For bodily injury, in other words, somebody's got to get hurt, somebody's got to trip and fall, get sick from breathing fumes, somebody gets hurt, or property damage arising out of your operations. So um, it, it, you've got to actually have one or one or the other has to occur before your general liability policy will step in. Um, so if, if you're thinking about it, there, there are a lot of holes there, a lot of things that aren't covered because those two things don't come out of, of it. So to help you out, I've got a couple of claim scenarios. Let's say you're, you're an artist and you're leasing studio space in a, in a large building. Maybe there are other artists in there as well. And you leave accidentally or just as, as most of us do when we're painting, we just clean it up and leave it there and move on. Um, but you leave flammable materials next to a heater and a fire breaks out in your space. And not only is your own space destroyed, but the fire burns into your neighbor and maybe several others um, and their spaces are damaged as well. Um, and they can't work. They, they are, you know, smoke damage and, and fire and maybe water from the fire hose has made it um, so that they can't use their space anymore. Do you have extension from your standard general liability policy to indemnify both the landlord because he may be out of he or she may be out of rent and reimburse the other tenants for the consequences of what what you know basically um, or your actions or inactions as as the case may be there. There is coverage for this, but it is something that needs to be discussed and determined about whether or not your particular policy extends to, to the, this exposure. Another claim scenario, and um, Dale actually touched on this using the um, example of an arts festival. Let's say you're hosting an arts festival and you have multiple events. And you've got vendor booths, uh, food trucks, you've got entertainment. Maybe you're even serve, maybe there's a beer truck there. Maybe you're even serving alcohol. Do you have special event liability? Now, special event liability is, is special because it can be either extended from your existing liability policy or written on a policy all by itself. And it can be tailor made to that specific event. And it, it can be very economical because you're only going to cover the length of the time for the festival rather than you know, writing a policy that for a whole year. So there are different ways of putting that together. But if you do any of this, um, the, you do need to ask questions and address this with um, your insurance representative. Another way, and again, um, I go back to what Dale's question was, have you obtained evidence from the vendors that they have their own liability insurance? Uh, this came up when we were talking about property, but it is extremely important that you obtain certificates of liability insurance from your vendors um, to so that you can confirm that if um, something arises out of their actions, that they do have first dollar coverage and you're not brought in to, um, to a lawsuit and it would um, fall on them. Any, any questions about general liability? 
is another claim scenario. Um, and uh, a, this is a piece of general liability that does, it, it is not included in the standard policy and does need to be addressed in some cases. It's just something to think about. Let's say you're running an event um, and you're serve, you know, that service, serves children. And your uh, good example would be your volunteers are teaching the children to paint, work with clay, do a craft. Uh, maybe it's an art camp or maybe it's a, a, an art, art school that you're holding in, in your space or out in the public. Um, and one of your volunteers just very nicely just straightens the dress on the, on the child, you know, just to make her more comfortable. And the child goes home and talks to their parent. Parent says, well, how did art camp go today? And the child says, well, it was, it was great. So-and-so touched me. The parent calls your organization and files a lawsuit against you, um, do you have what, what's known in the insurance world as abuse and molestation coverage? Even if the lawsuit is unfounded, you would still, if, you, if a lawsuit is filed against you, you would still have to defend your organization and your employee or volunteer in this case. If you don't have this coverage, you also don't have uh, defense costs covered for to, to defend this type of lawsuit. And the important thing about this is this type of coverage provides first dollar defense. So from the moment you get that lawsuit, you have insurance professionals working on your behalf to protect you and to defend you. Um, and you don't have to try to do that for yourself. And they, they help you navigate through something like this. Also included in uh, this type of program are um, expenses that they reimburse or actually pay first dollar expenses to help you maintain your reputation or reestablish it. Um, by sending, sending out mailers, by doing uh, public service announcements, whatever is necessary to help you maintain your rep reputation in, in, in an instance such as this one. Any, any questions? Okay. Professional liability or directors and officers. Um, in the early slide, I said, if you have a board of directors, you need insurance. Um, and we also talked about how general liability, there has to be, somebody's got to get hurt or somebody's property has got to be damaged. You can also be negligible in the course of your operations. If you make a mistake, if you, have, if you do something that is perceived as bad judgment, there, nobody's gotten hurt, nobody's property's been burned up or damaged, but somebody feels like they've been misserved by your organization. Um, here's a, here's a, um, an, another claim scenario that may help you out. Um, your organization makes grants or um, and receives private donations. Someone alleges that your organization used the funds for purposes that they don't feel are associated with the organization's underlying mission. So they gather up a group of supporters and the, this group sues the organization's board and alleges misappropriation of funds and breach of duty. It, it, no bodily injury, nobody was hurt. Maybe somebody's feelings got hurt, but physically nobody got hurt. No property damage. You must have this directors and officers um, or professional liability coverage in place to both defend you and pay judgment should one be awarded. And not only does it um, protect 
the organization's board as a whole, but it also protects the individual board members. So those of you with board of, boards of directors, I'm sure your directors would feel um, much more comfortable or, or comfortable if they knew they were protected with this coverage, that you had this coverage in place. Any questions? Okay. Okay, um, how much is it gonna cost? You know, we've, we've talked about a, a lot of um, uh, claim scenarios and, and situations that could be covered by insurance, but how much, how much is all that gonna cost? What if we bought everything we needed or felt like we needed, how much is it gonna cost? Um, I've made a list of, of the items that determine much of the cost of your insurance program. How many employees do you have? And what's your total payroll? What are your assets? Uh, and that would, that would include um, property that you own. What is your revenue? How much money do you bring in from events? Um, are you within four walls? Is your organization in within a building or are you mobile? You, a, lot of, a lot of artists and, and a lot of organizations don't have a building, they, but they, um, they go out into the community and that's, that's where their operations are. Um, do you already have some protections and risk management processes in place? For, for example, property would be, do you have fire extinguishers? Do you, do you have a sprinkler system in your building? Um, you could have a safety manual. There, there are a lot of protections and risk management things that you can do to lower the costs of your insurance program. And lastly, valuation. And this goes back to, do you want replacement cost? Are you not concerned with, with replacing certain items? If not, you can lower the valuation. So all of these things are part or really the most important things that, that we can use to determine the cost of your insurance program. Okay, okay. I mentioned add-on services before, and these are just a few examples. Um, there are certain insurance uh, companies that if you um, place, if, if we place your insurance program with them. They have um, connected with certain certain um, organizations that can do services for you at, a, at a, either even a di either a discount or they get, or it's free. It's free of charge. It's just rolled up into your insurance program. Uh, one is uh, an organization called IntelliCorp, and if you um, have employees um, and you need to do background checks, they provide discount background screening. Um, you get free human resources, uh, human resource resources. There's a 24 seven hotline. Should something happen, you can pick up the phone and call, what do I do in this situation? Um, you have, uh, there are webinars available for you and there are um, also, if you do work in another state, um, there, are, there are some insurance coverages that are state particular, and you, can, you will have access to every state form should you, let's say you go down, go up to New York and you're doing a festival up there, that you'd be able to have access to that information. You'd have access to accident insurance for camp or school or for um, any kind of recreational exposures. Um, you, you, can, you also have access to safety guides and um, free risk management consulting. So all of these things are add-on services that are rolled into your insurance program to assist you to, to protect your assets and again, uh, your reputation 
and they don't cost anything. Okay, now, now that we've talked about all the things that could happen and about how much it might cost and maybe you're thinking, oh dear, um, what do I do now? Um, next steps, uh, there are a couple of different things that you can do. We, I, I am um, with First Volunteer Insurance Agency and we are an independent insurance agency. And that means that we have access to multiple insurance companies. Um, there are two insurance companies that we represent that specialize in nonprofit organizations. They have worked very hard for years and years to create and update their programs so that they can bundle all of your insurance needs into one product. So you're not going over here saying, well, I don't know, maybe this policy should, should respond or this policy over here or this policy over here. You don't, you don't have to worry about that. It's all in one place. Um, what I can do for you is I am here to, an, uh, to answer questions. I'm not selling a product. Again, I, I am a risk manager, um, a risk management specialist, and I am available and my contact information is right there at the bottom of this screen. And I am always available to answer any questions that you have. Um, we can look at your current insurance program. I can make recommendations. I can uh, obtain quotes for you with different insurance companies so that you can take a look and compare what you're getting with how much it's gonna cost. And you can make an informed decision about what the best thing is for you and for your organization. Um, we do have, uh, we're, we're local. I am, my office right now is um, on Broad Street downtown. We also have offices in Marion County. We're very active in that area. And we also have offices in the North Georgia area. So, um, Please feel free to call you. you. You you do not have to have your insurance program through our insurance agency for me, for me to to answer your question. I'm available. I I believe in what you guys are doing. I want to help you in any way I can. And if I can answer your questions, please don't hesitate to call me. Um, I so appreciate your time and I also appreciate what you guys do in the community and um, I thank you so much for allowing me to present this to you today. Um, does anybody have any questions at all right now? If, if you can't think of a question right now, you can either um, get my contact information from Amy or you can give me a call here at the office. Anybody? Comments, questions? Thank you for your time today. That's okay. That's all I have. Okay, well, looks like you just have lots of appreciation in the chat. So um, hopefully, everyone got uh, Elizabeth's information. Sorry, I was getting an echo. Um, so if that's, if that's all we've got, um, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, Elizabeth, thank you for all the helpful information and really important information. I know I learned a lot. Um, so, um, yeah, please do reach out to me if you'd like to be connected with Elizabeth, but hopefully you got her contact information and thank you for being so available to us. Yep. So with that, uh, I will give you the rest of your day back. So thanks for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.